In today's video, we'll go over a couple of ways to display a list in Flutter. This is a tutorial for beginners, but this can also use as a reference in case you forget how to display a list in the future. We are also going to explore scroll physics a bit. If you want a written version of this tutorial, check out the blog post I wrote on codingwithmidge.com. The link will be in the description. Here you have an app that has three empty tabs. We're going to fill each tab up with a certain list view example. In Flutter, for displaying a list, we use a list view widget. Depending on your needs, you can display a list view widget in multiple ways. First of all, we have a list view with a constructor. This is the most basic way of displaying a scrollable list. In the list view constructor solution, you just need to pass in an array of widgets as a children parameter. Those parameters will be displayed vertically, kind of like a column widget, but if the content inside the list view takes up more space than it's allowed to, the content will automatically become scrollable. This is not a very convenient way for displaying, for example, a list of data that you get from a database. Now we'll create a list view in our list view constructor widget and put in some colored containers with space between them to demonstrate this. Okay, so here we have that list view and as you can see it's very simple. We just create a new list view and in the children we pass in all these containers and put some space between them. And let me save this and reload that and you can see how this looks. Pretty basic, so... Here is our red container, that's this, and here is our empty container that just puts space between all of our containers. Alright, the next way of displaying a list view is by displaying it with a builder. This one is the one you'll probably use most of the time, and I use this approach pretty much 90% of the time. Here we use the listview.builder constructor in order to display the list view. This constructor requires an item builder to be passed in. Item Builder is just a function that takes in build context and the current index of the item it's displaying. The Item Builder function determines how a widget will be built based on the current index. ListView.Builder also has some optional parameters that you may use, such as item count, which just determines the number of items to be displayed. Let's say you're building a list view that displays a list of notes, and you have those notes to be in a list, let's just name it notes, and it contains the elements from the note class. The note class contains a property called title. The way you would display them is by using the listview.builder constructor, passing the item count to be notes.length, and in the item builder you would just return a text widget that displays the note title at the current index that you get from the item builder. Now here we are in our listview builder widget, and let's create a listview with a builder. We're going to have a list of strings that will represent the data we have to display. You may uh, get your data from a REST API or from a database. By the way, I have a free database basics course for Flutter, which you should definitely check out, but back to the topic at hand. Our data is going to be uh, like a hundred random strings, and in order to create a random string, we'll just write a function that will generate it. And the code uh, doesn't really matter, it's just some snippet I found on Google. So let's go and create that function. Alright, now that we have that, let's create a data property which is going to be a list of strings. Alright, now we have that list of strings over here, and here in the constructor we're also filling up that data with 100 random strings. And now we can build our list view. And so here we have our list view. As you can see, we're using the builder constructor, and we passed in the item builder. And the item builder just returns a container that has some padding over here, so we have some space between our elements. And our container contains a text widget that just displays data from our data list. And also over here we added our item count to be data.length. And that's pretty much it. Let's save this so our app would reload. And let's go to our builder tab. And as you can see, here we have all these random strings. And so this is the blue container and we can just scroll over here. Okay, now we have the final solution that we're going to use in this video. This one is a little less common than the builder, but can still be very useful. Here we use the listview.separated constructor. This one is extremely similar to the builder solution, but it takes in one more parameter, and that is the separator builder. Separator builder is also a function that takes in the builder context and the current index. The separator builder should return a widget that will be displayed between every two elements in the list view. For that you can use a divider widget, and that's what I mostly use when I display a separator, but you can pretty much return any kind of widget. Displaying a separator can also be accomplished with the builder solution, but this one is just more clean and concise. Of course, you do not have to display a separator between every list item, because we're getting the index parameter. So we can check what index we're at. For example, this can be useful when we want to display an add or something every like 10 items. 
So when we want to display an ad, we check if we are at the 10th index and if we are, we return that ad and if not, we just return an empty container or something. Now since our separated solution is extremely similar to the builder one, let's just copy over the builder solution and change it up a bit. Okay, as you can see, this is pretty identical to our builder solution. So now let's just change up the constructor not to be builder but to be separated. Alright, now we also need to provide the separator builder function. And in there, we'll just return the divider widget. Okay, now let me save this and reload the app. Right, now let's go to our separated tab. And as you can see, we have, I don't know if you can see this properly, let me make this a little bit bigger. And as you can see, we have this divider widget between every element. And as I said, you can return pretty much anything in this separator builder. It just needs to be a widget, so you can display anything between least few elements. Also, there is one more way to display a list view, and that's using the listView.custom constructor, and we're not going to explore that here, since it's a little more advanced and it's not so commonly used. Okay, now to finish this off, let's explore the scroll physics. This basically determines how our widgets are going to be scrolled. Flutter has four scroll physics implementations built in, but you can create your own if you want to customize scrolling. The built-in scrolling physics implementations are Never scrollable physics, this just disables the scrolling capabilities of the list view. Clamping scroll physics. This is the default Android scroll physics. Bouncing scroll physics. This is the default iOS scrolling physics. And fixed extent scroll physics. This one is a little more complicated, so we won't use it in the, today's example. So the way you change the scrolling physics of a list view is just by passing in the physics parameter into any list view constructor and creating an instance of that scroll physics that you want to use. So here we are in our first list view, and let's add the bouncing scroll physics. Right, so this was pretty simple. Let me save and reload the app. And let's go to our constructor solution. And as you can see, it bounces just like on iOS. Now let's change it to the never scrollable physics. Right, now save and reload the app. Go over here. And as you can see, we cannot scroll in our list view at all. We could also set this to clamping scroll physics, but there is no need since that's the default one. As you saw, there are quite a few ways we can display a list in Flutter, and we have not even delved into the more advanced ways with the listview.custom constructor. I really hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, like it, subscribe to the channel, and also follow me on Instagram, and also to remind you, if you want to see a written version of this tutorial, check out the first link in the description. That's pretty much it. I'll see you next time.